Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Nerd Topic. Everybody has a hobby or a full-out profession that they just get extra nerdy about. I want to know what it is, and I want to talk about it. Tonight, the topic is the drums, drum madness. I don't know what this uh, episode is going to be called, but it's going to be something drum, drum, drumming oriented. So we'll figure it out as we go along. Two very talented drummers in the house, Mr. Josh Orlando and DJ Ha. Welcome, guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks Glad a lot, Peter. Yeah, man. Uh, Ryan, we never met face to face, uh, so this is cool. Although it's virtually, yeah. virtually face to face. Uh, and Josh and I go way back, man. Like, how long's it been, Josh? Ten years at least. At least. Yeah. At least. Um, so yeah, this is cool. I think we're just going to talk drums. I was hoping maybe uh, a little bit of playing and playing at the same time, but I don't think Zoom's going to allow that. So. We'll get some good convos going, some question and answers going, and uh, and then maybe we'll we'll get some clips uh, added into the edit later. So this is going to be a fun time. Thanks for everybody for tuning in, and uh, please try to help me out with a subscription. I'm just trying to uh, to grow this channel and expand my audience as much as possible. But DJ Ha, why don't you give us a little uh, glimpse into like a basic story of of uh, of your your musical you know introduction, career, personality, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, so I specialize in live dance music. I'm a DJ. I'm also a drummer, a keyboard player, music producer, sound engineer. Um, I just wear a lot of different hats in the world of live music and live entertainment. Um, and then quick rundown of my resume is just like, I mean, in the past couple of years, just playing in different projects, things that are like live house music, live drum and bass, live like dubstep glitch hop type vibes, um, mostly on the drums. Sometimes I play keys. Um, and then I'm a DJ and I play every genre in pretty open format, not just electronic music, but like a little bit of everything. Um, and as far as my professional technical career, that started about 15, 16 years ago. I uh, managed all the backline on the Letterman show for years. And I was a backline tech as a drum tech, a keyboard tech, and a DJ tech. And um, I went out with Stevie Wonder, Alicia Keys, NERD, Jay Z, Kanye all sorts of hip hop and R&B acts. Yeah, I can name a bunch of rock stars. But I worked for this company and I was very blessed and very lucky. I learned a lot while I was there. Um, that was kind of like my boot camp, And I got to work with a bunch of rock stars, some of my biggest influences, obviously. And um, that has all convoluted into what I've done in the last couple of recent years, which is like I said, it's kind of like specialized in live dance music, the combination of like the DJ influence and that culture, me like growing up, running around New York City in the rave scene in the 90s, like the epitome of that scene. And love, like really, like being in a little bit of everything, techno, house, like whatever, really focusing on jungle and drum and bass and like very syncopated, heavily syncopated fast rhythms were a huge influence on me in general. So as I became a drummer and as I evolved, like all that stuff influenced me a lot. And, and here we are today. So. Fantastic, man. Yeah, I love that you're coming at everything from multiple angles because I find it in general, most of us like on the social media world or just in our own personalities, like kind of funnel people into wedges. And I think if you just dig a little bit deeper, you notice that people are very versatile, drummers especially, like you can't just be a rock drummer, like for the most part, you got to be dipping into all different kinds of styles and everything. So that's cool, man. I didn't know that much about your, your background work with uh, being a tech and all that letterman and all that. We got to talk about that a little bit more in, in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would, uh, I'm not like Josh, I believe to be more what I little, I know of him, but he's a completely different, like comes from a different world of being like a session drummer, I believe. And like that kind of vibe, like I'm a total caveman. I beat rocks together until they sound good. Like, I think Josh is a little more obviously like advanced in being an educator and theory wise and that kind of stuff. So this is, like I said, we two come from two very different schools. So I'm um, oh, interested yeah. to hear what Josh has to say too. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's hear what Josh has to say. Josh, tell us about your musical personality career, if you will. <laughs> um, I would say that my musical personality comes from pretty much every musical style that you could fathom. Um, my, I'm really in, 
into, I mean, just about every type of music that there is. Uh, and I, um, just listening to it, I'll, I'll take what I hear and, and adapt that. Like if I'm listening to like a, a really cool, like drum and bass or jungle thing, I'll try to incorporate that into something of more of like a funk idiom or, or, or like things like that. Um, but I mean, where my passion lies is definitely in funk, fusion, and uh, metal, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get my inspirations musically from anything from like Jamiroquai is one of my favorite bands, uh, most favorite bands ever, Mashuga, um, Panzer Ballet, if you've never heard of them. Those guys are just absolutely ridiculous. I can't even like yeah they're just they're just crazy check them out if you've never listened to panzer ballet they're stupid good and they'll take your mind for a loop for sure um in regards to my like just musical background i went to temple university forever and a day ago it seems <laughs> yeah. um uh i'm in uh, you know I'm in, I'm in a ton of bands i play in a band called package that's like and musical collusion they're both like funk fusion groups um i do do a lot of uh you know since covid hit and we're all in lockdown i've i've definitely taken a lot more to session drumming which i'm completely and utterly infatuated with every time i sit down at the kit mm -hmm. i'm always looking for ways to create new sounds and just learning how to mix and whatnot um and uh and, and things of all, all of that sort. Sure. And, uh, basically, other than the Temple University thing, you know, I definitely don't have a, a ton of people that I've, uh, that I've played with that are of like Kanye West quality or, or any of that, but uh, I have done a bunch of shows with, um, let's see, I played with uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, Chuck Berry, Little Richard. Um. Um, but cool. So I feel like everybody knows you guys a little bit better. I actually feel like I know you a little bit better as far as that. I always knew you were a metalhead, Josh. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't quite expect uh, DJ Ha. I didn't quite expect you to say like one man show, do everything. So this is kind of cool. I'm learning like. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, well, I so I I would say I'm not a one man show. I would say okay. I mean I I am. I've done. I've pretty much done every reiteration that you can of like what you consider be dance music so for instance like i have been, done my own what i would, would you'd call a live pa mm -hmm. and uh you know live performance on my own with like just the drums and a keyboard and a laptop you know what i mean and i'm like literally playing the drums and the keyboards at the same time with like backing tracks coming out of logic or like you know whatever DAW I happen to be using at the time or I'm also a DJ so I'll do DJ sets on a set of CDJs you know or I'll incorporate my keyboards and do live sequencing like and just come up with improvisational loops like on the fly and incorporate DJ samples and then get on the drum kit or play percussion along or you know what I mean like and then sure. I've been in all these different projects of different genres that incorporate that so you know. So. If you if you could only use one expression, whether it be DJ drums, keys, I know it's a juvenile question, but I'm trying to just get to the heart of where you think musically. Uh, what what instrument would it be, or what situation would it be? Oh, I would feel I'm like a percussionist at heart. Like I, you know, like it's that's where the roots like hit me the most. You know, like like why I feel comfortable on this topic. <laughs> yeah sure because i mean sure. i could talk i can nerd out on tons of stuff just as we all could but i definitely yeah i feel like i started with percussion as like my first instrument before i moved on to a drum kit i had a lot of latin percussion just like congas shakers tambourines stuff like that i learned like kind of playing those grooves before i moved over to a drum kit <laughs> Josh, do you play any other instruments? Um, I would say the the closest thing that I get to that um, is I also sing. Okay. Um, but 
I have written my own music, but I wouldn't, I honestly would not say that I play any other instruments. Like Got, when I yeah. write my own original material, it's more of me sitting in Pro Tools with uh, my Arturia synth and just playing around with it until I hear something that sticks. And then I'll manipulate that uh, to what, whether I want that to be the bass line. Um, then I'll put that to a click and then, and then I'll find another sound to layer. I, I really like to layer when I write. So, no, I, w I honestly wouldn't say that I really, uh, I really play anything else. I definitely do not consider myself a hand percussionist whatsoever. Like, my okay. technique is... That's why I have a hand sonic sitting right here for when I record. <laughs> yeah, these things are great. They are great. Pay <laughs> respect to the to the differentiation because, like, there are a lot of people who, and honestly, I feel like it's generally the, this way. It's where it's drummers who just like pick up a djembe and start playing it. And I'm like, ooh, like you're just playing like a, a goofy beat on the djembe, you know, and 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 or you know. So like, I respect when people say like, I'm a percussionist, fine, or I'm a drum set player, fine. But when they actually like separate it and say like you know i'm not like i know i am not a conga, conga player like i know a few of the timbal i have a basic technique that i can hang with and if if somebody didn't know i could play something and i could play on a singer songwriter album and it would sound fine you know but i am not a conga player that would be uh, you know uh you know if you if you scrutinized the playing you know but as far as the darbeki the doomback like i think i actually can play that drum and that is kind of like my thing in a way so like it is even funny you get that like percussion umbrella and then you know it still doesn't mean you know you can you can hit them all like DJ how do you feel that way like there are certain instruments where it's like like timbales let's say that like could you play timbales like authentically or uh no and I and and like quite frankly I don't approach any of these instruments authentically I'm completely self taught I started very late in life like you know I grew up playing sports and I was a tennis instructor when I graduated high school. Cause I excelled in, at that. And then I moved, I didn't start playing the drums until I was like 18, 19 years old. So I was a very late bloomer. God, if I was playing when I was five, Jesus, we might not even be sitting here talking right now. Who knows what I'd be doing. But, uh, you know, I, I, I pride myself on not being like the most technically savvy, but I, I do pride myself on my creativity. Like I come from a place of z like zero influence. So yeah, of course I have my strengths in one instrument and then another, you know, like I wish I played, I would, I've been eyeing up the fanciest Darbukas for the last like year, like, di like straight from Egypt, like, or M Morocco, really like, and like super fancy, like I'm with you, man. Like I want to move into that world. Cause I've, I've like, fucked around with my friends, excuse me. I've messed around with my friends, you know, Doombeck now and now and again and i love that genre of music like i'll incorporate that with midi instruments as much as i can like and then i'll w pull out a sitar on my keyboard and start playing these you know sort of like eastern instrumentation and then throw all sorts of western grooves and or sounds on top of it you know that's that's some of my favorite stuff to do so yeah yeah I, I we're always learning and we're always growing you know you start with one instrument and you move on to something else, you know, or like, and, and, and there's always constantly a little bit of just like growth. If, if, if music is a lifelong passion for you, I feel like that right. just happens. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Once you admit that it's a growing thing and you're learning the whole time, then there's nothing wrong with facing some unknown territory and being like, okay, I'm a little out of my, I don't quite have my leggings, but I'm going to learn this, you know, and, and explore this. And, yeah. um, what, and it's what, important what, to know your strengths and, you know, and, and use them, you know? Yeah. 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 What, what would you guys say is something musically that is beyond you? Like, not that you couldn't play it, but that it is literally like the kind of album you put on and you're listening to it and you're actually like, try, like there's some separate where you're like, oh, I, I would have to be my best game or, or practice, you know, put a little like, two three week shed session before i could get into a situation to play with that kind of music like is there like josh i really kind of want to hear that answer for you because uh i i have a stronger idea of your playing so it it would be nice for me to know 
what's what's like right on the cusp of you like too di like slightly difficult to play or really a challenge to play so i i hold my limits um really at at the speed of my feet on um in regards to like double kick work um that is that's i mean i love i love death metal like the craziest crap you can fathom like cattle decapitation is one of my favorite bands like they're awesome and their drummer uh, i mean they you know uh, origin is another one like these guys they can play these blast beats and and their and their their footwork is just it's it's way beyond anything that i think that i could ever do regardless if i i turn into a, a marathon runner and like i could just get my foot speed like it's just a, an entire other technique. I'm not saying that I can't play fast with my feet and I can utilize them to my strengths in regards to like when I'm doing fills and, and, and doing like grooves and whatnot. Um, but that's, that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why I respect Tomas Hawk of Meshuggah as much as I do. Like he is one of my favorites because, listen, I mean, anybody that's heard the song Bleed uh, off of the Obzan record, like... Yeah knows that obviously that guy can that guy can he's got some serious footwork going on but like that's the most in, intense thing that i've ever heard him do um and everything else but like even with how crazy they are they still groove right like, and, and it's hard so like i draw my limits at like basically there's only so fast i can go right um if but in regards to your question about like a record like or a band that i listen to and i'm just like okay and it, actually the it was a band that i mentioned earlier panzer ballet like i got on a, on a major kick with them i heard heard about them the first time when i was in college and basically um you know i i of course you know i was like 22 years old i i wanted to learn this stuff because i knew it would allow me to get better especially with with um odd meter stuff while still staying in the pocket um and each record that they put out gets progressively just more intense and more, and the parts are just that much crazier and more difficult. And I would say probably about two or three records ago, that was the first time that I actually listened to them. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> like, I, I don't want, I don't feel the need to have to learn this stuff anymore. I can actually sit here and appreciate it for just being awesome and, I'm not going to say unattainable because anything is attainable if you work hard enough. Sure. But um, that that is the first band that I've ever really listened to. I was like, I'm good, man. You know, I just want to listen to the music and and not overanalyze anything. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Ha, same same question in a weird way. Like, it, you know, you, you get the offer to do a gig or a recording session. You're a producer and you're a multi instrumentalist what is going to put you right on the edge where you're like, man, I got to really do some research or do some, some listening or get prepared. Like what's, what's that music that would really challenge you? Um, I mean, you know, lots of stuff. Like once again, I'm not a session drummer. Like people bring me in because they know I bring something unique to the table. Right. So I have to work really hard just to like, make sure I can like stay with, usually it's more over when I'm doing I, I this is a little off topic but it's because I'm not as much of like a keyboard player when I have like that kind of stuff and people are throwing really advanced like oh, right. fast stuff that I have to keep up with like I'm not like this crazy jazz guy you know what mm -hmm. I mean so if I have stuff I have to work a little harder obviously to like make sure I'm up on these chord progressions where like these guys that are like session guys they look at the chart once and they're like, boop, 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 boop. you know yeah. what I mean? So it takes me a lot to like get there, but that's okay. Like yeah. people won't bring me in if it's that kind of gig and they'll bring me in and there might be a little bit of a challenge for me, but it's, you know, it, uh, I've developed enough of like a sort of a reputation that like people, they know what they're going to get if they're hiring me or trying to include me on a project, if that makes sure. sense. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That's what, that's actually what I would think you would want is to be the guy that gets called for the thing that you do. Uh, right. you know, and and yeah. also, you know, you could surprise people and stuff, but you know, rather than just a blank slate, like come in and play anything, you know? Yeah. 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 And then on this, on the side of like, 
I know we were sort of talking about like things we've heard that like kind of blew us away. Like I could say like, uh, I would say the first time I heard Mahavishnu Orchestra, like Birds of Fire. And I heard, you know, I mean, I know Josh is going to be like, <laughs> oh yeah, Billy Cobham. Like, duh. Like, you know, like we all know Billy Cobham is like yeah. through the roof. So, you know, when I heard that and I heard not only his playing, which is of course incredible, but like the combination of different musicians that brought that sound together, I was like, what the hell is going on right now, <laughs> you know? And of course, Billy Cobham, once I heard him on that album, became a big influence on me and lots of funk and metal drummers. Like, you know, like I consider myself to be like, if, you, if I was going to acoustically, I'm like a funk drummer you know i play like funk and hip-hop like i hosted a you know like one of the hip-hop jam sessions in philly for like two years and i was either playing keys or drums <laughs> depending on the other musicians if i had one of my badass drummer friends that was around right they would come and play drums and i would you know play keyboards but you know um that was my train of thought i don't want to go too deep into that but no that's 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 my, cool Mahavishnu Orchestra, that was the thing that like melted my face where I was like, I, that's when you take the sticks and you're like, like what? Yeah. Like, what, yeah, what is yeah. Billy Cobham doing? Like, I'm yeah. like what? <laughs> so. That's a good place to be at and, and have the approach though that, that you guys are both, uh, or the, uh, the outlook, uh, the, the attitude that both of you are talking about, which is like, I'm cool. Like, I know I could work to get to that, but I also just enjoy the beauty of it and the playing. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm like that. I'm like that with Jacob Collier. Uh, oh, just talking about him two seconds like when i hear him sing and i know that there's this crazy shit going on underneath when he's playing piano uh you know like his voice is obviously amazing but it's the interaction that gets me because i know at times he chooses his voice to be the dominant thing and then at times that the harmony and is and he interplays between them both so much that i'm almost like oh man this is even more to me more complicated than four limbs because you're moving through chords and you're voicing those chords and your voice is like, it's just, it gets deep for me for that. So I hear that stuff and I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm like, I'm not even going to try and emulate. I'm going to try to hear something in there that I've never heard before and learn, like just take this as a learning opportunity. And his rhythm is there. So it's like oh, yeah. those harmonic distinctions and like complicated, complex things that are going on, but it's all like in this other like syncopated thing that's happening. And like, yeah. He'll, he'll like layer all this stuff and kind of go off into this place and then like settles back into the like, you know, resolve that you expected. And you're like, how did you even get back there? Like, you know, yep. in yep. a tasteful way, in a tasteful way. Yep. All right. Josh Orlando, uh, you know, a month from now, the world returns back to normal and you just start jumping right back into live gigging again. Uh, you know, you have your choice of venue and band uh, or, or stylistic situation. What, what are you most excited about, about returning to the normal world? Um, oh, you're <laughs> going to make me choose. Well, I, I, I thought of that midway through. I was like, ooh, he's going to put a band on the spot. So, you know, <laughs> delicately. <laughs> now, um, I'm going to mention three, but I'm going to make them really, really quick. Actually, okay. four. One, my Dave Matthews tribute band, because that the i just love that stuff it's what i came up with carter beaufort is a enormous influence on my playing um i'm really looking forward to that obviously package because that's that's my true love i love those guys um uh musical collusion the fusion stuff with andy lalasis dave hartle and carl cox okay. bunch of really really bad dudes and a new thing that actually happened because of covid and a video that i put up I got hooked up with uh, David Weiner from Steve Vai's band. Um, he's been his, like, obviously Steve Vai is the lead guitarist um, of his own group. But Dave has been, like, his right-hand man for 20 years now. So uh, he hit me up, and we started, uh, and we're doing a project. We have already written a record, and we're, like, David, Dave and I still have never met in person. But um, we've throughout we, we have a band called Monument Shine, and it's uh, and a, a, an entire record is completely written. So like I'm really excited, honestly, just to meet the guys in the band 
Yeah. And um, and play that stuff out as well, because I think that'll do really well. It's very accessible and um, just really fun music to play. I think you Fantastic. guys. Fantastic. All four of those things sound amazing. So when the world goes back to normal, like just keep me in touch. I want to come see. I'm so Jones and for every situation that we've been deprived of. Uh, but those are just like over the top. So I want to be there at as many of them as I can. And they all sound amazing. Hey, real quick, uh, Josh, uh, we I used to work with Arthur Paley. Oh, the doctor. The, do <laughs> the doctor. Okay. I don't know that nickname for him. <laughs> We worked together at Sam Ash Music back in like 2002 or something I, like that. I love Arthur. He's he's one of my favorite people. There is there is definitely no one else on the earth like him. And, very talented. Very talented. Uh, he, Pete he, Arthur is one of those guys that plays every instrument mm -hmm. and he makes them all better than you do. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah uh, he's unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, he's he's and he's a great hang. Just an overall terrific person yeah. i've seen him in in cool some guy. orientation of a project you've played in and also showing up oddly at places too and just playing the bass very musically so i was like there's more to this and then you told me that one time like in between gigs we were passing through the night and you said this guy plays drums like better than than any of us and all that. i was like jesus man so that's amazing that's genius man that's that's fantastic yeah. um He's a Howe, what's your return to normal you know just this is what you want to do the most, you know, to perform per, to to perform for people. What's like your dream setup once everything goes back to normal? Wow, I mean, so like a lot of the stuff that I was doing is like kind of just went on hiatus. Yeah. Um, so it would be a lot of starting fresh, to be honest with you. Um, okay. As a drummer, I mean, I have other things going on with you know as a DJ and production stuff. As a drummer, um, I've never actually done a full-on, like, live drum and bass project, which I've, like, been part of, like, little thing. We've teased it. I host the only monthly jungle and drum and bass event in Philly. It's called Rainforest. Now, that's a DJ-heavy set, but once a year, we do a live set with me on drums, my saxophone player who's here, a DJ, a vocalist, sometimes a rapper, and, you know, basically, it, it's... Uh, that kind of vibe. I would really like to, to dedicate a project to that vibe, you know, where it's going to be mostly, you know, liquid drum and bass, jungle, a little trip hop, like that kind of thing. Um, my girlfriend's a very talented singer, Elise, and nice. you know, I'm at here at her place at High Note Hollow. So we're going to be doing stuff here as a venue um, as far like we're doing video shoots, photo shoots and live streams. So we will do some of those of uh, my original music that we are writing now. We that'll be our outlet because we're basically our own self like functioning, you know, video production right. TV studio. So, um, you know, getting that original music out is going to be really exciting for me, um, which is just all stuff that kind of has just been sitting on the shelf. And because I've been involved in other bands and other projects, like I don't produce a lot of my own original stuff, but like due to COVID, <laughs> I didn't make a lot over this time, but I've like kind of like sorted all the things that I, pro the songs that I, have, you know, those like semi-completed projects that you have. Mm -hmm. I've started to kind of condense those and get those together. And this is the kind of project that like tonight, I'm literally in the middle of a rehearsal as soon as we get done here we're going to be working on that kind of thing. So yeah, that's what I'm most excited about. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I've been sensing a theme with a lot of like my, the, the creative people that I know that I'm, I, I draw to and I'm inspired by of like, it didn't slow them down in the sense COVID hasn't slowed them down in the sense of, of creativity. Like, you know, like Tim Masterly, Josh, like I talk to him all the time and he's always just like recording and we're bouncing tracks out. He does like, he did a score for one of my short films. I think Josh played the drums on the black ice theme so like similar to what you're saying dj ha like uh when you have that urge you'll like adapt to to, to the scenario that like we all want to play live again but it doesn't sound like it slowed you down and it doesn't sound like it slowed josh down and it hasn't slowed me down but i've been making films and crossed over an idea to do a live talk show and just turned it into a zoom thing until i can make it a live thing you know um so that, that's just inspiring to hear everybody like just keeping going you know and, and adapting because i think drummers have to adapt you know um we have four minutes left 
so I guess maybe we should just do another like hi bye kind of thing. Um, you guys can can give us your I don't want to say your pitch or your promotion, but just tell us a little bit about uh, where everybody can find you. Most importantly, so Josh Orlando, where can we find you? Uh, how can we potentially buy your music or support you or hear hear what you're up to? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Josh Orlando Drums. You can find me at www.joshorlando.net. Um, Facebook, all of all of that stuff. Um, I'm definitely available for recording um, of any any style of music, as well as uh, private virtual lessons. Um, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. And we're looking out for the package and, and the other three band, bands you mentioned as well. I can't wait. DJ Ha, where can we find you, hear your music, support you? Uh, let us know. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. It's just Ryan DJ Ha. Same thing on both platforms. Uh, you can look me up on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. I do have some original music, just like my own original productions on there. Some break beats, uh, some like tropical house music. Um, that's like, it's half electronic, half acoustic. You know, there's live instrumentation and, you know, MIDI programming and stuff. That's the stuff I do. Just you know, uh, on the regular, that's the natural stuff that comes out of me. Um, and uh, the only other thing I'm going to say is I'm working very hard on our new space here at High Note Hollow. And anybody out there, we're doing super high quality video shoots and live streams here, multiple 4K cameras. Uh, you know, I'm an audio engineer by trade. That's what I do. So anything you want to shoot here is going to look and sound amazing. Um, big, bring a big, huge brand, bring a solo project. You want effects on a green screen. You want a bunch of cool angles, you know, whatever. I worked on TV shows for years. So like I have as a backline tech and a little bit as a sound engineer. Um, but let's just say I have a good eye and I know how to like recreate a good visual production when it comes to shooting a TV show, Peter, like if you would like to do something like that, <laughs> we have the gear and the facility to do it. So that's awesome. the stuff that I'm working on. My passion, long story short, is I am in music production. It's what I do. I like putting out my own stuff, but my passion is really helping everybody else like make their music and make their art. That's like what I get off on is helping everybody get their content out there. So. That's beautiful. Gentlemen, thank you for making time. Uh, I hope we can do this again. Uh, maybe even potentially explore a platform where we could all be playing together. I'm sure that'll happen in some way or another. I've heard things about Facebook Messenger and, and maybe even Skype where you could interact with the audio live. I'm sure there's a way we can do it. But yeah, uh, there is. <laughs> actually, you, you would be the guy to talk to. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, please, everybody watching, uh, take the opportunity to find these uh, fine musicians and the projects they're in and support them. And uh, I'd appreciate a subscription or a like or a comment down below just to let me know uh, what you're thinking, how you're enjoying these musical uh, excursions of Nerd Topic. It's been a blast. Uh, I hope everybody has a happy 2020 and uh, signing off for Nerd Topic. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you, Josh. Nice to meet you, my dude. Yeah, man. Thank you.